church and missions. And let's go, when we think of that, we think of missions, we are drawn to Matthew chapter 28. We begin with the words of Jesus known as the last commission found in Matthew chapter 28 and verses 18 to 20. And Jesus said to them, to his disciples, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Hallelujah. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the ends of the age. Hallelujah. That's found in Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 20. But I want to draw your attention this evening to Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. And it says, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the church and missions go hand in hand. Hallelujah. The Lord says, who shall I send? And who will go for us? And the answer came, here am I, send me. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, our God is a sending God. I'm going to speak about God, the mission in the Old Testament, the mission that Jesus was on, and the New Testament mission. Okay? So we're going to cover the Bible quickly. God is a sending God. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God whom we worship, we said you're beautiful, you're awesome, you're mighty, you're majestic. He's a sending God. He sends on missions. So let's go to the Old Testament where we find that God is a sending God. God is a missionary God. Hallelujah. Amen. The God whom you love, the God whom you worship, the God whom you serve is a missionary God. Now, if you go to the Old Testament, you will find hundreds of references where you see God as sending God. What did he do? He sent Moses. Amen. He sent angels. He sent prophets. He sent commandments. And he sent his word. Hallelujah. So God is a sending God. Look at Exodus chapter 3 and verse 13. And Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? What do we learn from this verse? He's saying, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. This verse speaks about Moses acknowledging that God has sent him on a mission. Because God is not just a calling God, but he's also a sending God. And God, after he calls, he prepares to send. And so we see in the Old Testament, number one, God as a missionary on a mission chooses Moses and sends him to set his people free. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20. He said, see, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. So God sent Moses. God sent an angel. Amen. I want us to understand this evening that our God is not just a prayer answering God. He's not just a miracle working God. He's not just worthy to be worshipped and praised and adored and thanked and blessed. But he's also a God who sends. Amen. A God who sends his people out on a mission. And that is why Moses was sent. An angel was sent to, to make the way. So what are we learning this evening? God has a dynamic involvement 
in the world of men in the world of women god is dynamically involved why because he is ascending god hallelujah someone say this evening god my god is ascending god here am i send me lord did you know what you said <laughs> did you know what you said you said send me lord here am i send me lord you said it now no one is saying amen you said it god heard it get ready get ready get ready because he's sending you out on a mission and so this evening what i just started with it just forms a backdrop of our understanding of mission the church and mission in terms of evangelism why am i sharing this with you why does the holy spirit want us to hear this because that's the vision of the church to evangelize to reach out not just in the nations but even here where god has placed us to bring in to equip and to empower to send back out into the world so we see number 1 god is a sending god now we also need to learn this evening that god is a god of all nations amen it doesn't matter where you come from god is a god of all nations he loves the world so greatly he loves every tongue every tribe every nation hallelujah and it is his desire that none should perish and so missions for the church is vital without missions the work of jesus christ cannot further and god has called whom he's called the church to be part of his mission so number one in the old testament we find that god is ascending god he called moses and he sent moses he called samson and he sent samson he called gideon and he sent gideon hallelujah he called samuel and he sent samuel he called david and he sent david amen these were all on missions he called jehu and jehu was on a mission You see every man and woman of God whom he calls he sets them on a mission to accomplish things for his glory so that his kingdom will advance hallelujah so number 1 after we know that God is a God who sends it's it's very important to know that God is a God who sends otherwise we won't know who sent us because when we are sent we know who to report to when we are sent we know who is with us amen so god number 1 is a god who sends number 2 is a god of all nations psalm chapter 86 and verse 9 says all the nations you have made will come and worship before you o lord they will bring glory to your name but the question is how will these nations come and worship the lord how will these nations bring glory to his name unless we go to these nations to take the gospel amen and that accompanies with the power of the holy spirit with signs wonders and miracles the church is called to do that because the church and missions go hand in hand these two cannot be separated because jesus has sent us as we began in matthew 28 he has sent us called us and sent us look at what genesis chapter 12 and verse 3 says this is what god promised abraham he says i will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you i will curse and all peoples i want you to catch that all peoples of the earth will be blessed through you hallelujah look at god's plan in sending that every nation would be blessed through this one man because of his obedience and faith in the one who called him and he was willing to go where he was sent he stepped into the unseen do you know something to step into the unseen you need faith 
You can never step into the unseen without faith. Hallelujah. So I want to tell you something this evening. What you have sown in faith, don't dig up in doubt. What you have already sown in faith, don't dig it up in doubt. Hold on to what God has given you. So we see God is a God of all nations. And that is why we must know that wherever he sends us, we should be willing to go. We cannot have preferences. I only like this nationality. That is why I will only go here. I mean, there was a nationality that Jonah did not like. And you know where he went? And I'm sure no one wants to go there. He did not like them. He hated them. And God is saying, hey, I am the God of all nations. Jonah, I have sent you on a mission. I have called you. You're trying to dodge me, fox me. You cannot. Once I have called you, I have chosen you, I have marked you, you need to go and do what I have called you to do. You might give hundreds of excuses like Moses said, my vocabulary, I stammer, I'm not good, it's been long, I have not. God says, I have called you. It is I who has sent you. Why? Because I'm the God of all nations. Isaiah 43, 10 says, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. So what is God saying? In the Old Testament, his perspective is presenting as salvation coming from the Jews. We find Jesus speaking about this in John chapter 4 and verse 22. That salvation comes from the Jews. God chose one man. He chose a nation. But that does not mean that God does not love other nations. His plan was through this nation, salvation would reach out to other nations. And other nations would take the gospel to another nation and another nation and another nation. So God, number one, is ascending God. Number two, he's the God of all nations. Number three, God has a plan. Amen. Hallelujah. God has a plan. God has a plan. You know, we, we, we drove, we drove in, in, the, in the city of Manila and through that, through heavy traffic. And at times, you know, when you're caught in traffic, you're so used to smooth traffic. If you are used to most of the time, it's, it's quite challenging to spend five hours on the road and three hours in a cab and not know where you're going and then know, not sure where the cabbie where is going and not know who's going where. And there's only one thing. That, I, I mean, there were times that we, we felt like, what's happening? What's up? But there was one thing that really kept me on. And that one thing was, there's someone waiting on the other side to hear the good news. There's somebody waiting on the other side to hear the good news. And so people came for the meeting at 4.30 and we landed at 8.30, but they were waiting to hear the good news. We could have called the cab off, take the next U-turn and go back. But he said, we are on a mission. And God has sent us. It is God's business to hold them. It is God's business to see us through. It is our business to hang on and say, I will accomplish, I will do all things to Christ Jesus. Why? Because he's the God of all nations. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we see God is a sending God. He's the God of all nations. And he has a plan for each one of you. Hallelujah. I want you to look to your neighbor and say, hey, God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. And he has a plan for me. He has a plan for me. Hallelujah. 
No demon from the pit of hell can thwart what God has for you and me. Hallelujah. Sometimes we may get held up somewhere. That's not the end of the story. God is sovereign. He's still seated on the throne. He who has called us is faithful. He will see us through. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has kept in store for those who love him and say, God, I want to go to the other side. God, there's somebody dying there. I want to pull them from that fire, hell fire. And I want to send them to heaven. Why? Because I'm on a mission. Hallelujah. I'm not just on a mission because I've taken a flight and gone to somewhere. I'm on a mission every day. Every day is a mission. Hallelujah. The place where you have planted me is a mission field. Hallelujah. The life is full of opportunities. Every day is an opportunity. Who knows what tomorrow holds, but let me do something for my God today. Hallelujah. And that's the mission of the church so that they will reach out. They will bring in. I tell you something, listen to me. If you don't win souls, you have all the time to get, get engaged in all the possible nonsense. He said, she said, they said, we said, money shorted, this one is sick, head dispaining, sinus problem, tie up. And you can just go on. But you keep winning souls, God will take care of you. You keep winning souls. I, my, tell me something. I will challenge you. You can record this message and keep it with you. If you keep winning, winning souls and you fall short of anything, come and meet me. Come and meet me. I challenge you, you will never come and meet me and tell anyone that you are short of anything. Because when you serve God, when you are on his mission, he will take care of you. The road may be bumpy. There must be a pit. There must be a river to cross. Storms may come. But there's one thing I know. You'll reach the other side. You will do. Because Christ is with you. He will enable you to accomplish as long as you hang in by faith and say, God, I'm going to do it. Nothing is going to stop me. No one is going to stop me. Hallelujah. So God has a plan for you. God did not bring you to this nation for nothing. The freedom here is amazing. If you, if you just cross borders, the story may be different. The freedom that you and I have is amazing. And sometimes we can just sleep over it. We need, we need to be wide awake and doing something for the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, wake up. Because church and missions go hand in hand. So God sending action can be summarized as this. Let, let me put it this way so that we, we'll, we'll get it in short. God sends his word and covenant to one man. What's his name? Abraham. Abraham's heirs were the recipients of God's word. Israel was that nation who were called by God. Despite their failure, God preserved a remnant who would remain faithful to him. And within that godly remnant, there would be an individual servant who would make the way for all to hear the word of God. Amen? So, at the beginning, with Abraham, and finally, with the servant, God purposed this world of men and women would all be recipients of his saving grace. God used that one man who was obedient and because of him, he sent his servant. Out of that remnant, he sent his servant and he made the way for us. Not just for us, but through us. Take the gospel to the nations of the world. What what, what, what an amazing privilege we have. Amen. What an awesome privilege we have to be called to take the gospel to the nations of the world. Hallelujah. Even here in this nation where you are, you are, you're close to 200 nationalities. Who knows whom God will put in your path? You share the good news. Amen. You pray for them, they'll be set free. Bondages will be broken. Shackles will be broken. Their lives will be transformed. They'll be equipped. They may go back into their nation and preach the good news. God can use you. You know, what, a, what an amazing opportunity. You know, people say, God, God is taking me. He will take me to the world. You know something? God has sent the world here. 
God has sent the world here into the place where you and I are residing. And we are on a mission. We are not here for fun. We are not here just to earn money. That will come. You win souls. You want a financial breakthrough? Win souls. Win souls. Win souls. You will have a financial... I'm, I'm not saying stop tithing, stop giving. I'm saying along with that, win souls. And you will have tremendous breakthroughs in your life. Amen? I've asked the Lord to give me over a million souls. You, you can, it's, it's between you and the Lord. You can ask Him. But I know one thing. Whatever that figure may look like, it begins with one. Somebody said the longest journey begins with the first step. That one soul. That one soul. That is waiting to be touched because God has a plan not only for you, but for somebody out there who does not know him. He has a plan. And so we see the Old Testament that God chose these people and he put them on a mission. And then we come to the New Testament where Jesus is the great missionary. The church is called for missions. Not just local missions, but global missions too. You know something, if we, if we can't reach out locally, we, can't, we will not be able to reach out globally. It all begins here. It all begins at the place where God has placed us. So we see as we go further that Jesus was a great missionary. God had a missionary purpose from the beginning. Why? God is a God of missions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He sent his word, his law. He sent his prophets. And above all, he sent him. Amen. 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 You know, David Livingston put it this way. <clears throat> he said, God had only a son. God had only son, had an only son. And God made him a missionary. David Livingston said, God had only one son. And God made him a missionary. And that son gave his life for the church. And the church needs to ask this evening, what are we doing for the one who gave his life for us? Are we just warming the chairs? Are we just playing church? Are we still caught up into... I said, they said, we said, I like, they like, we like, don't like. But sometimes we can get caught into all these things and be so unfruitful for the kingdom. God has called us to be on missions and he's called us to be fruitful. Amen? To bear much fruit. Hallelujah. So we see that Jesus, as a great missionary, he reaches to the world through Israel. In John 4.22, he said, salvation is of the Jews. Hallelujah. So what did Jesus do? Jesus maintained his priority as he commenced the mission, but his view was also towards the world. He did not say, I've just come for these people. I'll just do everything for these people. And I don't care for the world. For God so loved the world. Amen. So Jesus, a great missionary, sets the example for his church. Amen. What does he say in Matthew 8, 11? I say to you that many will come from the east and west and take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom. What is he saying? Many will come from the east and from the west. He says salvation comes from the Jews, but they will come from the east and the west. Jesus had this plan to reach out to the world. And he wanted to reach out to, to the world through his disciples, through you and I, through the church. And so Jesus, the greatest missionary, sets this example as a role model for you and I that we must take the gospel to all nations. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus was on a mission, not just for the Jews, but for the whole world. And what amazes us about Jesus is that 
in this mission, Jesus delegated. Jesus was an amazing team player. I like to go on, on missions with team, with a team. Everyone is important. God, it's not that pastor has gone or an elder has gone and that's the end of the story. It's a team. As a church, we can do great exploits for God. Hallelujah. Jesus is our greatest example as a missionary. He reached out of places where, his, where the people of those times were not willing to go to Samaria. He was willing to go and reach out. Why? Because he had a heart for the lost and the church needs to have a heart for the lost. We must have, if you don't have a heart for the lost, ask Jesus to give you because he has a heart for the lost. If you don't have compassion, ask because you can't have compassion of your own. Ask Jesus to give you compassion. If you see the people coming, the blind, the lame, the dumb, the deaf, the broken hearted, the messed up. So, oh, where did I come? Is this the right place? I need to go somewhere else. Hey, that's where God has sent you. Now exercise your faith. Exercise your faith. But I'm only used to tissues. If tissues is the issue, then you're in trouble. Are you willing to go where Jesus wants you to go? I'm not boasting here this evening. I mean, we, we have our team members here. We have they've made amazing arrangements. Praise God. But there are some of them who don't even know that we went to bed without food and without water. Praise the Lord. I'm perfectly fine with it as long as we accomplish what God wants us to. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm saying, are we ready? Are we ready to go where the Lord wants us to go? Jesus has set the example of the greatest missionary. Are we willing the church gets sometimes so comfortable, so cozy where we are, but God by his spirit is shaking up the church and saying, you know what, guys, I have blessed you tremendously. You have, you have more than you need. It's time that you rise up. It's time that you go because the church is called to reach out to the lost. The church is called for mission. The church and the missions go hand in hand. If the church does not go, then who will go? Well, you know, pastor, there are organizations, they are very good and they will go. Then Jesus should have said in Matthew chapter, did he make a mistake by saying in Matthew 28, all power authority has been given to me, therefore all institutions and organizations, charitable organizations registered under section number so and so go to. Disciples. Are you a disciple of Jesus? Sure. We need to go. We need to obey our commander-in-chief. We need to obey and go say, God, I want to go. Do sometimes we think, where can I go? That's not the point. The point Isaiah says, here am I. He did not say, tell me the plan. Is it a five star? Is it three star? Is there a chopper? Is there a seven, triple seven? He says, I, here am I. I. God, then wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Africa, I'll go. Mosquitoes are big as flies. I'll go, God, but I'll go. You know, sometimes we, we have all this in our mind. I shared, I, I believe we, some years back I shared to you, or maybe Pastor Nita mentioned to you that we'd been to, to Madagascar and, and you know, there are sometimes questions that are asked at the wrong time. I mean, you're, you're in a car, you're traveling to the airport, you're about to be checked in and this is, but have you taken the shot? There are such big mosquitoes in Madagascar you get malaria in all area. So it's like, no, we have not taken the shot. We have not taken, there's no time. And we said, you know what? That mosquito has to penetrate the blood of Jesus to stink us. And trust me, for seven, eight days we were in that land. Not a mosquito touched us, nothing. If you are willing to go where God wants you to go, then he'll take care of you. If you got a million questions you throw before God, more, I got someone else. God is waiting. Jesus was willing to go. And it's time the church goes. It's the time the church goes. I'm, 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 I'm challenging you this evening. When God opens door for us to be on mission trips, I want you to be the people who will come. Says, Pastor, I want to make it there. I want to make it for that mission trip. Tell me what can I do. 
tell me, I want to do something and serve the Lord. I want to see hell plundered. I want to see heaven populated. I want to do something for the sake of the kingdom. Praise God, I'm doing something in his house, but I want to do something outside. I, I, I get equipped here. I get charged here so that I will go out and use what I receive. Hallelujah. And so Jesus, as one of the best role models, as a missionary, went out and he also delegated. Why? Because Jesus was a superb team leader. Luke chapter 10 and verse 1 says, and after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. Jesus sent them two by two. Are you willing to go? Two by two. Wherever the Lord opens the door. Africa. I'm not looking at the Africans. They'll say, that's where we go regularly. Africa. Amen. Amen. Congo. Amen. Mm. Uganda. Amen. Kenya. Amen. Ghana. Amen. Now, I've taken, I've taken names of three countries. That's where I've been invited. <laughs> that's where I've been invited. I took names. You believe God will open doors in different nations? Zimbabwe, Rwanda. Mozambique, you name it, and God will open doors. God will open doors for you in India. You're willing to go? Yes. Amen, that's it. I'm willing yes. to go. The African is willing to go to India. The Indians are willing to go to Africa because God is a God of all nations. Amen. And the Filipinos are willing to go anywhere. Hallelujah. God is a God of all. And we are all willing to go anywhere where God takes us. You know, when you go on missions, you will have a breakthrough. It does not mean you will not have a challenge. We have a team member here from our mission trip. Trust me, she was in the hospital this morning. Rushed to the emergency. Arrived on a mission trip yesterday. The most important thing is that she's seated here in church. That amazes me. Came in the emergency. Doctor may say A, B, C, D, Z. But she's here in the house of the Lord. And that's our God, that's our passion that we have for God, for his house, for his presence, for his people, for the lost, hallelujah. If we don't have compassion for the lost, we don't have anything. We don't have anything. We are so cozy where we are. We are so comfortable. And so Jesus delegated, hallelujah. He delegated to them and they went two by two. And let me tell you this climax of Jesus' ministry found in Luke chapter 24 and between verses 36 and 49. After Jesus' death and resurrection, the mission of Jesus took a permanent form. Hallelujah. How did it happen? You see, in between Luke 24, verses 36 to 49, and verse 47, Jesus spoke about the, the mission being universal. Hallelujah. He also spoke about the mission going out from Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Then in verse 44, he spoke about the Old Testament scriptures, about his death, resurrection, and bringing light on it. And so we see from there, the mission took a permanent turn. And so the disciples were all prepared to go out to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. One of my favorite verses in the New Testament, one of my favorite verses is found in Acts chapter 8 and verse 8. It talks about Philip going to Samaria. Well, he didn't go to Samaria after he applied for vacation. He got his ticket. He went to Samaria because there was so much of persecution. And so, while others were hiding, they were meeting from house to house, Philip went to Samaria to preach the gospel. And so we see, as he preached the good news, there was, it was accompanied by signs, wonders, and miracles. Oh, the, 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 the captives were set free. Those in bondage set free. Demon possessed were set free. And that verse says there was great joy in the city. Hallelujah. Amen. 
You see, as we go on missions, not only once in a month, once in a year, but on day-to-day -day basis, there will be great joy in the city. We are responsible for bringing great joy in the city. It does not come when the stock exchange graph goes up. It comes when we preach the good news. Hallelujah. When the captives are set free, when the blind start seeing, when the deaf start hearing, when the dumb start speaking, when the paralytic starts walking. Amen. They are set free. Then we see the kingdom of God being manifested down here upon this earth. And that's the work of the church. You're not just called here to come and clap and sing and say, wow, good music, high music, low music, good music, good people. We are here to get equipped to go out and bring others in, into the kingdom first and then into his house. Hallelujah. To worship him. That's the call of the church. If you're not doing that, trust me, we're not doing anything. If we're not doing that, we are playing church. Yet another church, 869th church in the city. What difference does it make? We are here to make the difference. Amen. We are here to make the difference. We can't afford to be quiet. We can't afford to wait because Jesus is coming is at hand. Whatever is happening in the world is all pointing out to his, he's coming soon, he's coming soon, he's coming soon. It's all saying he's coming soon and, and all, every time it's getting louder and louder. But the, but the point is, are we getting deafer and deafer? The, everything is shouting out, Jesus is coming soon, he's coming soon. Are we getting deafer? Are we just comfortable? Because we have a few things on our list and, and all of them are checked right. Ah, this is all fine. I'm like, what do we need to be shaken up? We hear the word of God. We must respond to God's word. The church is called to be on a permanent mission. I'm just giving you a report of this trip. But we are called to be on a permanent mission. The Great Commission, somebody said, what was it in Haggai? It says, the last commission, uh, the last command of Jesus needs to be our first priority. His last command, our first priority. He says, go. He didn't say just sit down. He didn't say relax, enjoy, make money. He says, go. Are we willing to go? As I close this evening, let me tell you about Paul in the New Testament. Paul, he not only went to his people, but he went out. Amen? Look at what it says in Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. You know what did Paul know? Paul knew one thing. He knew that he was an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I represent the Lord Jesus Christ. And 2 Corinthians 5, when he speaks about it, we are there for Christ's ambassadors as though God were making an, his appeal through us. God is making an appeal to them through us. Amen. But if we, mm, there's no appeal. If we go and speak, there's an appeal every time, every crusade that we had, one altar call and boom, that place was full of people. Full, responded. It's because of prayers, because God, the Holy Spirit moved. But equally with that, people are hungry. They want to know the truth. If we don't share the truth, how will we, they know the truth? If we don't go, how can we share? So we need to go so that we can share, so that they can hear, so that they can be set free. And Paul models that. And he, he goes from one place to another, teaching, preaching, teaching, raising up, delegating, and moving forward. And so, before we can partake of the communion this evening, if the Holy Spirit has spoken something to you, something, and you say, Lord, I, I, I want to respond to that. I, I want to be that missionary for you, Lord. Wherever you placed me, 
And wherever you open doors, I'll go. I want to get out of my comfort zone. I want to do something for your kingdom. I want to be your healing hands. I want to bless someone. Everybody whom we met were needy people. They were in need. Only when you go and meet them, you will know, wow, oh, oh, they are in need. My Lord, I never thought. And as you allow the Holy Spirit to minister, as you yield yourself, God will release the supernatural. Amen? Hallelujah. When you walk in obedience to the Holy Spirit, I tell you something, the supernatural starts becoming natural. Walk in obedience to the Holy Spirit, supernatural will just become natural. As you come to the table of the Lord tonight, if the Lord is, the Holy Spirit is, is nudging you, prompting you to make a commitment, Lord, I will go. We heard in Isaiah, saying, who will go? I will go, Lord. I'm not going to look, is, is my spouse going to go? Is my best friend going to go? Is our clique going to go? No. Just I, here am I. I'm going to go. And if you are that person this evening, I want it to be between you and the Lord. I want it to be between you and the Lord. And if the Holy Spirit is causing you to make a commitment to go on missions, I want you to commit yourself to the Lord for that. And then I would want you to pray for it every day. And I tell you, God will open doors. One mission trip will change your life. One mission trip can change your life. Not only yours, but the lives of the multitude. You were born and called and chosen for a time like this. If you ponder upon your problems, I promise you, you can take it in writing with my signature. They will all multiply. If you keep pondering upon your situations, they will multiply. If you say, Lord, here am I. I'm willing to serve you. God will take care of all your needs. What you cannot do, he's able to do. If you say, Lord, here am I. I want to serve you, Lord. I want to, whatever it takes for me to go wherever, I'm willing to do that. God, I don't put conditions to you. God, I'm willing. And I know when I do that, you are so faithful. You will take care of everything. You will give me much more than what I can ask or imagine. 